my, my perspective on what's happening in the industry and what the opportunities are for all of you young people uh, going forward. Um, it, was, it was truly an honor. The only problem is he only gave me about 20 minutes, and this is something I could talk about all day long. So one of the, we share a couple um, things in common, all of us that are in this uh, facility today. Um, many of you um, are interested in aviation and you're here to learn more. Um, some of you know that that's going to be your career path. Um, uh, but, but for all of us, you know, we have this interested, we're interested in these things that, that, that fly. The other thing that we share in common is that we live in a world that is absolutely uh, dependent upon a robust air transportation system. It drives the world's economy. Uh, we're becoming a much more mobile society. We travel so much more. Uh, it's how goods get moved around. Um, and so, you know, think about for a minute what this world would be like if there was no airplanes. It'd be very different, wouldn't it? Um, in, the, um, in the way that uh, we, we use the airplane today. What's cool about it and what's really important is this um, is a community of really passionate, dedicated people. And I use the word community because that's exactly what it is. As you enter into, um, in, into the aviation world, um, it is a tight-knit group of people all over the world, but share this passion for airplanes and for space and for things that, that move. Um, we help each other, we work together, um, and, um, and we have great lives and great careers as a result of that. So um, I'm going to spend some time talking about that. Um, and then we're going to look at it both on a global basis and on a, uh, on a local basis. First looking locally within Colorado, so when I talk about that aviation drives the economy, uh, we're a great example that, of that in this state. Um, now this is information that is uh, three years old. The uh, Division of Aeronautics for the Colorado Department of Transportation updates this every five years and they're in the process of doing it again. But 350,000 jobs um, across Colorado in, in aviation. And it um, impacts the, the um, economy by almost $50 million now. And that's money that's being spent in the state that goes to companies, goes into our economy, goes into our paychecks uh, as a result of aviation. So we live in a great aviation state. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that um, in a moment. Uh, but first I wanna share just a little bit of my journey because it may be helpful um, as you look um, down the path that you're going to go. Uh, I took my first airplane ride when I was 10 years old and knew from that moment that I wanted to be a pilot. My parents were really supportive of that. They helped me learn to fly when I was, and get my pilot's license when I was 17. I went off to college to study aviation, um, absolutely with the goal in my mind to become a professional pilot. Um, and I was excited about that. And at the time that I was in school, really the, the best path to becoming a pilot was through the military. So I was targeted to go be a pilot within the Air Force. Um, and then, um, my eyes had problems. My eyes went, um, went bad. And so I know, knew that I could no longer uh, pass the flight physical to be in the Air Force. And I had to make a change in my career and a change in my plan and a change in my dreams um, and, and take a day job. So I started um, with Lockheed in California, a company called Lockheed Jet Plan as a flight planner. Uh, that company got bought by Jefferson Sanderson um, in 1989, and, 19, and, and then I moved out to Colorado in 1995. Boeing bought Jefferson, and so I had this wonderful career um, in, and an opportunity to be in leadership in both of those companies um, until I retired in 2016. Uh, the airplane that you see on the screen behind, I still have, that was an airplane, and the one behind it that in 2013 um, I built um, with eight high school kids um, in, um, outside of Washington. Um, and that was a program that we started with the General Aviation Manufacturer Association. And can, so I continue to own that airplane. I live in an air park outside of Parker, and I can roll that airplane out. Yesterday, we rolled it out with my um, 
my 12 year old granddaughter and we went out and uh, had a nice flight, flew to quarter, uh, floated to quarter. So some of you knows what that, that means. Um, I'm happy to describe that later, but, but I still continue to fly and I'm still involved in aviation, um, nonprofit aviation board. So, you know, if you start out with a dream to do something and something uh, changes that, then, um, you know, things work out in the end as, as you, you kind of reset. So this is the thing, I think one of the things that bring everybody here today and that's interesting, which is, is our industry is in really need of talented people. And starting with what Boeing um, has projected as the need over the next 30 years for pilots, you see the numbers up there, 602,000 new pilots um, around the world. Now, this isn't 602 total, a thousand total pilots. This is additional pilots that are, are needed to replace those that are retiring. And in, uh, in the pilot world today, uh, the, the, there's mandatory retirement at age 65. It's about to change to age 67. Uh, but um, also the industry is just continuing to grow. You look at flight attendants, uh, 610,000. Uh, excuse me, uh, 900,000 flight attendants and 600,000 uh, maintenance people. Um, and the thing about that is that these are jobs around the world. The one thing about aviation that's wonderful is it cuts across boundaries. These are, you can live anywhere in the world um, and be in, um, a, a contributor and, and have a career in aviation. Um, but it, it also means that you don't have to be a mechanic or a pilot or a flight attendant. Uh, the need for um, any opportunities, which I'm going to share with you in a minute, are huge. And let me use an example of uh, United Airlines. United Airlines has 93,000 employees. Of those 93,000 employees, around 12,500 are, are pilots. Um, around 20,000 of those are flight attendants. And about 9,000 are uh, maintenance people. By the way, they need, United needs 6,000 new maintenance people in the next, uh, next three years. So the rest of that, 50,000 of their employees do all kinds of things, from software development to management of, at the airports to managing fleets. So the number of jobs and the opportunities, you don't have to be a pilot and you don't have to, if you don't like to fly, this is still a tremendous industry to be a part of. Coming back to Colorado, so you, when you look at uh, our, our state, we're the number one um, aerospace state um, as it relates to um, number of employees per capita in, in the U.S. Um, and these are, uh, these are fantastic jobs. There's over 100,000, excuse me, there's over 1,000 uh, companies in aerospace in this state. Um, and a large percentage of them are small companies. I mean, we have the Boeings and the Lockheeds and the Ball Aerospaces. So if you want to work for a big uh, company in engineering and um, all the things that they do, those opportunities are, and you can do that in Colorado, all the way down to uh, these small companies that are being very innovative, building um, and, and providing all kinds of services and uh, materials to the, to the industry. So when we talk about what are some of those other jobs, this is a, a great uh, slide that comes from Women in Aviation that talks about some of those other jobs. Um, and again, engineering opportunities, software development opportunities, um, in, you know, flight operations, air traffic control. Uh, airport management is a, is a wonderful thing, uh, a wonderful uh, career path. So you need to get out and um, get on the internet and look at uh, th these different jobs and, and opportunities as you go forward. So where is our workforce coming from? Part of it is, uh, it, it, some of it's coming locally, and so I'm gonna use one example um, of, uh, of, a, of a place where the next generation of pilots and, and aviation uh, experts and, uh, is coming from. And so Colorado Skies Academy, which we have a bunch of uh, our, our seventh graders are here today. Thank you for coming for it, guys. This is a great school, and a lot of people don't know about it. So this middle school, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, was started in 1999 at Centennial Airport. Um, and 
it started in portables, now it has a permanent building at the airport. Um, and when you look at it, it's located uh, on the Wings of the Rockies Exploration of Flight campus, right next to their hangar, um, and right outside the fence for runway uh, 28. So, um, so all these young people can look out the window, and when they're outside, they can see airplanes flying and, and landing. Um, it is one of the very few uh, schools that is actually on an airport in, um, in the country. Um, what's neat about it is, uh, is the learning curriculum. So uh, Colorado Skies uses uh, a, a project-based learning uh, curriculum, which means you don't open a, go into class, open your book to page 43 and do the problem uh, um, assignments that are in it. Um, it. This is working together collaboratively as teams. The teams are divided into what we call squadrons. Um, they do amazing projects and they report on those amazing projects. And I would tell you, grab one of these uh, CSA students and ask them about what it's like to live in that, or work in, and learn in that environment. So it's a fantastic, fantastic school right in our backyard. So if you know somebody that's interested, in, that's going into sixth grade or is already in a, in a junior high and a middle school and they want to be, be uh, focused on aviation, this is a great place to do it. So. You know, and, and for our CSA students, you know, this is this is why you're at, um, at this school and why I think everybody is here. Our industry and our world, our society is about to go through this monumentous change in the way we move. I mean, this is almost as revolutionary as the Wright brothers uh, flying for the first time. Um, and you know, we we saw in the presentation about what's happening in in drones, in drone technology, um, in the way that they're being used. These autonomous uh, f uh, units that are flying and doing all kinds of things from, um, as, w as we heard, um, help, helping in search and rescue and, and investigation to, um, to ultimately delivering packages. But what's changing and what's coming, which is going to be, uh, again, revolutionary, is advanced air mobility. These devices and these systems, which will begin first with pilots, will move short distances. They'll be all electric. The change in propulsion from, from gasoline-powered, jet-fuel-powered um, aircraft to electrically-driven aircraft is going to be significant. Um, these are going to move people across town. You know, for example, from downtown Denver to, out to DIA so they can catch flights. They'll start off with pilots in them, but ultimately they're going to be completely autonomous. Um, and there are hundreds, and I mean hundreds of companies around the world right now that are developing this technology and, and deploying it. And you're going to see over the next couple of years more and more of these kind of uh, these kind of transportation systems being introduced um, in different places around the world. Tremendous opportunity there um, to, uh, to do that. And then the commercialization of space is amazing. Um, and what's happening um, in that regard, you know, there's, there's probably, possibly, and, and truly possibly, a student from uh, CSA that may go to Mars someday in their career. We're going there, and so the space industry that's uh, um, that's growing the commercial space industry it also has tremendous opportunity. And again, you live in one of the um, best states in the country that's at the leading edge of developing uh, these new systems to, uh, to move people into space. So, like I said, our world depends upon a robust air transportation system, which means we really depend upon having great people who can do it. Um, and our community needs you, so spend some, a lot of time today um, asking questions, learn to network and meet people. Uh, don't be shy. This is, as I said, people in aviation are so passionate, we're always happy to share our story and, and give advice and to mentor. So, um, so thank you for being here, thank you for, and thanks to the CSA team. Yay. By the way, ask them about their, ask these guys about their uh, drone soccer team, which is going to be you know, a, a national champion not that far from now, so, so thank you everybody.